I'm now speaking to Gregory Artikiting, a notary in Mauritius. Notaries play a key role in facilitating the purchase of property in Mauritius, and Gregory is the key um, notary for the essence. He's going to take us through the legal process of Mauritius and when buying a property in, in, in Mauritius. Welcome, Gregory. Thank you, Rini. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. What legal system does Mauritius form? Well, Mauritius is a hybrid system, in fact, uh, where English and French law are combined. It's uh, quite unique in the world, and in fact, it's a subject of studies from a lot of lawyers around the world. Mm -hmm. And how can um, buyers obtain permanent residency in Mauritius? Well, permanent residence can be obtained through a different scheme, and one of them is through buying properties in Mauritius. Uh, there are different schemes which have been created a long time, over the last 10 or so years. And you've got different schemes which are called, like, uh, commonly called PDS or IRS or RES or Ground Plus 2, which are different schemes with different little tickle in them, but which mainly on purchase of a property of 375,000 US dollar price or more, grants you the right to get a resident permit. What's interesting with a, a resident permit is that, in fact, it allows you um, to apply for a resident permit on the purchase of a property. For example, if it's a property that you purchase off plan, which you are not ready to use yet, you can already, from the registration of your deed of sale, apply for the permit and you get the resident permit within the next six to eight weeks. So, very interesting and practical for those who would like to come in and be a resident in Mauritius, although their uh, property is not completed yet. And would you say that Mauritius is a safe destination to invest in? Definitely, definitely. As I said, the uh, uh, Mauritian system is based on French and English law, and the civil law is French, very protective of the end buyer. Uh, maybe coming back one step, first Mauritius is a safe place because it's a stable country, and with uh, politics which is a very uh, European style, if I may plainly say it like that. And um, with laws which are based on the French uh, Code Napoleon, so strong civil code. And um, that's all context. Now, uh, it's also very safe because uh, you've got a notary who is at the center of a transaction. The notary is the only lawyer who is authorized to deal with property transaction. And as opposed to Anglo-Saxon system where each of the parties have got their uh, legal advisor on the answer, notary is responsible for uh, both parties' uh, information and protecting of rights and obligations. So it's a kind of referee which stands in the middle, which is very protective. Okay. Now, uh, on the different type of properties you can purchase, uh, a notary will be responsible for uh, verifying over the last 30 years that there is no mortgage, no servitude, or that the property really belongs to a person who is selling it to a, to a buyer. So there's a good protection. And um, also, um, the different type of uh, sales which are possible on the sales of plants, for example, are very well protected. Mm -hmm. uh, you have got uh, two periods in those uh, sales, where you have got a pre-contract period and a sale period. In the pre-contract period, it's a time where the promoter is proposing a property or project for sale when it has not started. Uh, in this period of time, an interested buyer, although he's not sure that the project will go ahead, is safe because the deposit he makes is made on an escrow account to his name on the client's account of the notary, mm -hmm. which means that if this project does not go ahead, then the money is saved and is returned to him, or if he wants to uh, uh, to not to purchase uh, the property for reasons which are implied. For example, he doesn't get his authorization to purchase, he gets his money back. Okay, great. During, during the construction, sorry, during the construction, he's also protected. Uh, we mustn't forget that he's buying off plan, so the uh, 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 property is not built up yet. He's got a, a guarantee from the bank, but uh, if ever the promoter fails to complete, the bank will provide a fund to complete the property. And that's what we call a GFI, that's right. Yeah, that's a GFI, which is a French acronym, which mm -hmm. would not work in English, but yeah. it's a French acronym <laughs> for a guarantee. Very important, this GFI guarantee is unlimited. That is, it's not on for 50 million rupees, 100 million rupees, it is until the unit is completed, the bank will have to provide a fund. Okay. So it's very safe.
And you are also protected for the after-sale period, if I may say, in the sense that in Mauritius we've got a decennial guarantee on all that is, that is structural and uh, a biannual guarantee for everything that is not structural. And uh, this guarantee is covered by an insurance that every promoter must take so that they are covered in case there are problems on this issue later where the client can go back to the insurance if the, prom if the promoter is not there anymore. And how many years are those um, insurance? So a decennial guarantee is for 10 years mm -hmm. on structure and two years on non-structural from the moment the property is delivered. Okay, great. And, and can you tell the viewers a little bit about the VIFA the structure? Yeah, so the VIFA structure um, itself, so we've got this pre-phase contract where you have the, the uh, preliminary reservation contract which is signed. When the client signs this, uh, uh, the CRP, we call it a CRP, yes. will, will mention the duration of the CRP, that is the time during which a promoter can offer the sale or withdraw if a project is not a success. Mm -hmm. And that CRP is valid for 12 months if it's an off-plan development? It is valid for 12 months if you are asking up to 25% deposit. Yes. It is valid, you can have one for two years if you're asking only 2% deposit. Okay. And it could be uh, for no amount of years specific if there's zero deposit. But the current practice is we're going for a 12 months period in Mauritius and in your project. Yes. Yeah. So this is for a CRP. A CRP will be accompanied by the plans which are, uh, are showing how the unit will be built in the future, about the uh, specification summary, the type of materials used, what is proposed with the villa, so the client knows exactly what he is buying, and also of course the price and uh, potential uh, scale of payment or, uh, uh, for, for uh, the price uh, along uh, the construction of a property. So this will be the CRP. Now, once the promoter fulfills all his conditions, that is, the marketing is a success, he has all his permits, and the client is authorized to purchase by the uh, Economic Board of Development of Mauritius, mm -hmm. then we go to a sale, and the sale goes, goes on with all the conditions of the sales, which basically mentions the date of delivery of a unit, its price again, the parties, precise description of a property, and all the conditions that apply to a sale, mainly the warranties we just talked about, and uh, the uh, conditions uh, under which the duration of a contract for until delivery may be extended for act of God or legitimate causes of suspension of delays. Okay. And Gregory, are there different structures that a buyer can purchase in? Yeah, we've got a, a very flexible system, and I would say that the our hybrid uh, legal system certainly helps here in the sense that you could either purchase under your own name mm -hmm. or under French orientated uh, systems, which is a society, uh, or uh, English uh, um, influence uh, vehicles, which would be companies, trust, or foundation. Uh, it's, it's not uh, easy uh, to say which one is the best. In fact, what is nice is everybody has his tool to meet his requirements. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting part. What's the difference, uh, because I know some of our viewers are familiar with um, a trust in their own countries, but what's the difference between a um, society civil and Mauritius versus a trust? Like, can you just explain the, those two different structures? Yeah, um, in, in a few words, a society civil has got legal personality and it's a French-based uh, kind of uh, unlimited liability uh, PLC, if I could say it like that. That is, the partners create a, a legal person which owns their property, and uh, but this uh, uh, legal person has, does not have his liability limited to a share capital of a society. The interesting part with a society is uh, that it has very low cost of administration afterwards, in fact virtually no cost of administration at the moment, and it allows you to manage your property easier afterwards. For example, if you buy a property at two persons, the manager will determine who is the beneficiary of the resident permit, based on that. Interesting. The trust is um, a different uh, entity in the sense that the trust has no uh, legal personality. You put a property in the hands of a third party to be managed to the benefit of beneficiaries. 
it's not commonly used uh, in the French law. In fact, the French law forbids trust, so it's not very well uh, uh, practiced. Uh, but uh, a, a trust is what's nice with a trust is that it's very flexible. Mm -hmm. You can basically uh, prepare your trust agreement with every condition you would want to. Uh, but in Mauritius, it has got a, a lower influence in the sense that uh, you've got four stairship rules applying in Mauritius, and it sometimes contributes to the trust uh, possibilities to be flexible. Okay. And what strict compliance um, applies to KYC documents? Well, uh, what we said the uh, way to purchase uh, is uh, very flexible. You can create uh, actually a, a vehicle you want. But it doesn't mean that we don't need to be very careful in terms of compliance. We are uh, at the moment reviewing, the country is reviewing mm -hmm. fully a whole set of compliance requirements and everybody is getting used to it now. Uh, but uh, basically I would recommend that people avoid, if you don't want to lose too much time, to avoid uh, too complex uh, legal schemes to, to, to our vehicles to purchase and we must be aware that source of funds will be uh, uh, checked and uh, until we, we meet an like, international European level, uh, level of compliance. Gregory, one last question. What in case of a succession? Well, um, in terms of succession, in Mauritius, uh, the terms are very favourable uh, in the sense that uh, first there is no succession tax in Mauritius, so the, the client does not need to bother about it for Mauritius for his foreign country or his country in which he comes from, it will be different. And in terms of authorization, it's important to know that although you, are, you need to be authorized to own a property in Mauritius at first, your heirs do not need to be authorized. They are, as of right, entitled to be the owner of a property. Be it the children, if they are, or a child, if there is only one, or any uh, Legator, which might to which you might bequeath the property, they are automatically entitled to be the owner of the property. One point on, on in terms of succession, which is important also, a resident permit, if it's in the individual uh, name, of course, if there are more than one heir, the, um, the client or the heirs of a client will need to notify the development board of who, which of the heir will be the holder of that resident permit as from the time of death. So it's a good thing that uh, if uh, he has a will, eventually to dedicate as uh, from this will who he would like to be the owner of a resident permit at the time of his death, if it is of importance for one of his child. Okay. So thank you, Gregory, for explaining to our viewers about the legal structure here in Mauritius, and we appreciate your time for being here today. Thank you for having me once again. It was a pleasure.